So the Japanese writing system when you first start taking Japanese is going to seem really really intimidating because it's so much different from English. Not only do you have two separate alphabets but you also have to deal with the kanji which are the Chinese characters but rest assured Chinese characters don't come until chapter 3 and note that I am using the Genki book. I know that mine's pretty nasty, but this book was well loved. Like I said, I took two years of Japanese, so. But, um. But yeah. Here's the two alphabets. Um. Now, you'll learn these gradually over time. Katakana tends to be a little bit more difficult to learn than hiragana, but I assure you that after a few weeks of taking Japanese, you'll start to really get the hang of hiragana. So, um. The first thing that I really recommend any Japanese student to do, or Jap uh, any student taking Japanese to do, is to go through and um, translate your titles, like the um, these sub these subtitles. It'll it'll show like short forms using short forms, and then it'll show like. Um, Naide kurasai means please don't. Um, so like, you can say like, jiro jiro minaide kurasai, which means like, please don't stare at me or something like that. Um, but you can remember what these are much easier. And it's, I always thought it was strange that the book didn't automatically translate this. Um, in order to make it easier for the student to find the page number, but they didn't, so you kind of have to do this on your own, and I'd recommend doing this for any language classes because I think the reason why um, these books don't put the translations is because they don't want the student to get ahead of themselves. Um, so there's like, thus making a statement, it's better for you to do hogai this. Um, this is like all coming back to me now, and, but the thing is, if I hadn't have written in these translations, there's no way that I would have remembered what any of those meant. So, it's just always a really good refresher to fill in those. Um, but when you start, when you start taking Japanese, you'll notice that the vocabulists always have, um, they always have the pronunciation in English, so you can kind of roughly say it to yourself, Ohio, you know, like, sayonara. That's really helpful when you first get started too, but um, if we move into like chapter, like here's chapter five, um, it starts to look a little bit more intimidating, let's zoom in on a sentence here. Um, the kanji are the main thing I mean, the kanji is the main thing that typically trips out Westerners, the Chinese characters, because they are very intimidating to memorize and write. Um, see, uh, this sentence says, Okinawa no umi wa totemo kirai deshita which means the sea was very beautiful in Okinawa. I apologize if my English accent or is really bad, but um you know, I I'm a student. I'm just learning, you know. I probably know about as much Japanese as a preschooler, so you got to go easy on me. But uh but yes. Um oh, sorry, it's not focusing. Ah, oopsies. But yeah, you kind of just learn those kanji over time, um, and you'll notice that the book has like these characters, and that's Takeshi-san, and I drew on him. <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't know how helpful this is, but I guess you're gonna kind of get an idea before you go in, um, but your Japanese teacher knows that this stuff is all really hard for you, so don't be afraid to make mistakes. I think that's the most important thing, is 
to know not to make mistakes. To know that you're going to make mistakes, but it's okay. They understand. Um, I'm sure they made a ton of mistakes when they were learning English. Um, at least that's how our teacher was. She'd always joke around with us, like, oh, you know, it's okay. Um, but yeah, here's the second year book that I used. And I didn't get fully through this, so I didn't get into, like, the, um, causative sentences. I mean, some of this stuff gets really, really intense and really confusing, especially when you get into the um, forms, like there's a lot of short forms and long forms and um, just like Korean or Chinese, I mean, a lot of Oriental languages have um, a way of having different words that um, sound this, I mean, sound the same, but have different meanings based on their context. I think that, I think that all languages are like that. But, um, another thing about Japanese that I want to mention is that it is a, um, it's not a tonal language, so pronouncing Japanese really isn't the most difficult language in the world for a Westerner to pick up, um, versus, say, like, Thai. Um, Thai uses a lot of up and down fluctuations and that can be a lot more difficult for um for westerners so don't be don't be afraid of that i mean um their alphabet consists of consists of different like uh, consonants followed by a vowel um i'm trying oh oopsies i'm in the second book sorry uh, okay Back to the first book. I know I'm going on and on and on, on, on. Um, This is actually a video for my friend but I, that I just met, but I can't remember um, what his name is on YouTube, so I feel kind of bad, but I'll leave a, I'll leave a link to his channel below. Um, okay, so anyway, the Japanese writing system, um, again, is... It's different from the alphabet that we have, but it's really not that much. I mean, okay, so there's five, there's five vowels. A, I, U, E, O, which are, um, which are used independently, um, and can form words themselves, such as E, which means good, which is just E, E, you know, together. Um, but... Most words are made up of, you know, parts of hiragana, and I mean these hiragana, which are made up of one consonant and one vowel. So sorry if I rambled a lot, guys, but um, I hope that will help any incoming Japanese students. And yeah, so I'll see you later.